I've been asked by several people, how do you start to write a praise and worship song? What are the what are the secrets? And so I interviewed Andrew Morris from Gateway Worship, and we discussed how do we start writing a song? What are the contents? What are the ideas for themes? And where do you begin? We talked about motives. We talked about different secrets and hacks to creating a good worship song. So if you're interested in writing a worship song, I think this will help you. Check it out. Well, hey, everyone, I'm here with Andrew Morris, and we're talking about songwriting, and we just thought we'd let you listen in. It's a great subject. Andrew is a gateway worship leader, and you're on the song review. I lead one of the song review teams for yeah. our songwriting process, yeah. Right. And uh, you also have taught for three years at uh, the King's University on songwriting, correct? So, uh, yeah, I've taught a class on songwriting and creative uh, creativity and worship, that sort of thing, at uh, the King's, yeah. Very good. Well. He's got somewhat of an expert opinion on this, I would think. <laughs> I don't know about expert, but hopefully I have some helpful yeah. thoughts. Well, you, well, say you're a beginning worship leader and you know you, you want to start writing songs. So yeah. what should our motives be How, and for writing a song for worship in particular? That's a really great question, and I think that's, that's almost the best question you could ask. Hmm to me when you're writing a worship song and and I would say kind of a caveat before we get too far into it there there's a lot of different songs you can types of songs that you can write so I would say kind of the information that I'm going to share is specifically geared towards congregational worship and and I also want to say that there's no one formula to do that and so all of these anything I have to say would just be kind of maybe helpful hints um, but if you're a beginner how do I start? What do I do? Um, th the first thing I would suggest is, it, it, one, if you know somebody that is a, a seasoned songwriter and is a good songwriter, I would spend some time with that person and, and get some great pointers and and maybe even try co-writing with, with someone who knows what they're doing just to kind of get your feet wet. Um, I, I would say motivation is a huge uh, issue. So I'll, I think today we have a lot of people that want to write songs because, uh, well, I'm a worship leader, I play an instrument, I know other worship leaders, and they're writing songs, and they have their albums, and we have this idea that if I'm going to be a successful worship leader, I have to be this songwriter. So it's an assumption. And there's almost pressure, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, if this is my identity, if I'm this, wor I, maybe I feel like I have to do this because other people are doing it. and. You know, there is a level of helpful, uh, helpful peer, peer pressure sometimes, maybe to coax us to, to get into something that God wants us to do. I would say if this is something that's in your heart, um, let, let your motivation be pure. The, and the yeah. motivation, I think, should be, I, I want to express something to the Lord, and if no one ever hears it, I'm okay with that. And that's a great question to ask yourself. If I write a song and no one ever hears it, and it never gets published, Am I okay with that? Did it serve its purpose? Um, yeah, because the because what you don't want to do is well, I want to be famous. I want to publish songs. I'm going to get my songs out there and be like so and so. Right. That's a wrong assumption because maybe you're not called to do that. Right. And it's a wrong motive because our heart's not in the right place. So how do you keep that in check? And and where where what are good motives? Right. One, we're talking about worship music. So what is worship? Where. Yeah. We're, we're responding back to God what, in response to what God has already done for us. So hopefully um, you have a testimony. Mm -hmm. Hopefully you have something that you're thankful for because those are, what are worship songs? Worship songs are songs that exalt God, that glorify God, that say thank you to God, that testify about the goodness, the, great, the attributes of God. And if that's something that's not already in your heart, uh, it's going to be hard for you to manufacture a song um, yes. that professes that. So, so I would say um, a great motivation would be, what's your story? What, what's, what's your heartbeat? What is God stirring in your own heart? What are things that when you talk to people and you talk to your friends about the Lord, what are things that are bubbling up in your spirit? Oftentimes, those are the things that God is stirring up, that, he want, that, that he's given you a re revelation that he wants you to maybe write right. about or share right. about. The song could only be 
for God for one moment. Songs aren't forever. Right. So, or it could be like a flower, just blossom for God for a season, not just a moment, but a season. Uh, or it's to share with your friends. Right. Or it's to share with your church family, or it's for a wider audience. Or it could be just a practice round. There you go. Well, and so let me kind of draw a, a, a comparison. So songwriting in and of itself, writing a song is a form of art. It's a it's an art form. And you could compare that art form to any other kind of art form, like painting, yeah. like dancing, like writing. Um, these are things that people spend a lot of years practicing on. If you if you if you look at a, a Monet, you know the Monet that you see in the museum isn't the first painting that Monet ever painted. He there's a lot of uh, Monet paintings that ended up in the trash probably or painted over because they were practiced. And there's no pressure to just out of the womb, you know, so to speak, you know, you're going to write this amazing song. It's, it's an art form and that's, it's a craft that needs to be, uh, and maybe it was a practice. Maybe, maybe they learned something from that song that they could uh, apply to the next song. And it's a good song, perhaps. Right. And it's just, it did click with somebody that wants to use it or whatever. So yeah. it's a good analogy to compare it, it to an artist. So you have to start somewhere. Well, and the other beautiful thing about art is that um, it, it kind of takes the pressure off because art, sometimes, art is subjective. That means art is going to be judged differently by different people. Yes. Um, but art isn't mu as much of an issue of I need to get be better than that person. Art is how can I express myself to the fullest extent, you know, and how can I get better at this craft? I, you don't look at Rembrandt and Monet and Picasso and say, well, this guy was better than that guy. We, we, they're all different and they're all unique. And that's yes. the beautiful thing. You can be you. You can be unique. You don't have to sound like Brandon Lake. God created you to be unique and you can be you yeah. and fully unique and fully amazing at songwriting yeah. um, with, with the right motivation. That's good. So say I feel God's called me to do this. I want to try. So how do I prepare to write a song? A worship song there so there are a couple components that go into that I, I would say uh, and, and people do it differently sometimes people are melody kind of oriented people and they they come up with a melody I kind of lean that direction where I'll, I'll hear a melody before I hear lyrics and I'll think man I really want to sing a song to this melody um, and I get pretty passionate about a melody um, there are other people that are lyrics people. They they just write poetry. They don't even have music to it. I've yeah, had that's me. <laughs> how many people have you come up, have come up to you and they're like, hey, I've written all these songs. I don't have any music or chords to them, but can you put them to a song? Yeah, and I'd say, well, talk to someone else. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I have all these uh, phrases and choruses and yeah. descriptions of God that I love to put in a song. Well, so there are a couple characteristics that I would say about uh, congregational worship music that's in, that, that are important to know. One, uh, you want these songs to be easy to sing. Yes. Because we don't want to get up on a platform and just perform the song for people to listen to. We want people to join in with us. Yeah. We want people to be able to hear the song and learn it and, and sing be a part it. And, sing it. Yeah. and so we want to be mindful of that as we're writing. Are we being too wordy? Are we, going, are we trying to go too deep? theologically in a song. A song usually, uh, a worship song usually isn't for a uh, deep theological study. A worship song usually takes a very simple truth or a simple idea or simple theme and just spends a lot of time simply stating that um, and allowing, uh, uh, not trying to go too too deep with it. And not to say too much in the song. Yeah. That's, that's what you're saying. One of the things we look for when, we, when we're looking at songs that come through the review process is um, who says the most with the fewest words? And that's a that's a that's cool. That's a really difficult thing to do because I'm I'm a very wordy person, and the worst thing for me is when I'm writing by myself is I always have to go back and just cut about half of my words because I just want to say so much, um, and I have to really remind myself. the The beautiful thing about a, a song is it takes two two art forms together. Well, actually three. You've got uh, music, and you've got poetry, and you also have the art form of, of someone singing it, of a vocal. The expression, uh, yeah. The expression Good. of that, and all three of those those things can contribute to communicating some uh, an idea right. or a thought or an emotion. I don't want to take for granted the power of that combination, and and take away from the music by trying to say too much. Right. If that makes sense. Right. So what do you what do you start with? Melody, lyrics. 
Yeah, so I I would say if there's if there's an idea or a theme, I think you need to come up with an idea or a theme. Uh, we get songs that say five different have five different themes in in one song. Yeah. And, Bad choice. <laughs> and and it doesn't mean they're not good things. They're all saying good things and saying biblical things. Um, but I would say uh, simplify. Figure out what do you want to communicate in your song. And maybe that idea is the love of God. You want to communicate about the love of God. We have a lot of songs about the love of God. And don't say to yourself, well, there are a lot of songs about the love of God. Yes, but you haven't written a song yeah. about the love of God. And God God loves to hear all, all of our versions. If you have a theme, that's the first step. And I would say the second step is usually you're going to focus on the chorus. So a chorus of a song, that's the part that we repeat the most. That's the most memorable part typically of a worship song. Um, and that's usually what, what has the, what we call the hook uh, of the song, which is kind of the most memorable part. What, what part of the song are, are people going to go home and hum to themselves after they've heard it? Usually it's the chorus, and usually that's the best opportunity we have to to uh, kind of grab people uh, to listen to our songs and to and to want to hear it again. Yeah, well, Be- I, I like what. Sorry to interrupt. I like no, what Mark Harris says when he, how he approaches it. He okay, say it's the love of God. Okay, well, what is the love of God? He asks all these questions, and then you write all those things down. And what is God saying to me about the love of God? Right. What, what scriptures talk about the love of God? And he gets all this stuff, even before he has a melody, and he has it all there. And so this whole topic explodes in his spirit, and certain phrases start come, and the song is being birthed. I love that concept. Yeah. A, a lot of times when, we're, when I'm writing, when I teach songwriting, I teach kind of how to do an idea board. Yes, um, and that's you, good. And you kind of start, you just, if it's like a tablet or, or a pad of paper, it doesn't have to be fancy, but you kind of, write a theme right in the middle the love of god you write that in the middle of the paper and then you stem like a kind of a sun with 